Nime Analytics Platform offers a native node to solve classification problems with the logistic regression algorithm. But do you already know what a reference category is? What regularization is? What the coefficients are? Where they come from? And why everybody talks about the likelihood function when it comes to logistic regression? If you know the answer to all these questions already, then you might want to skip this video. If not, I recommend keep watching. So, welcome to our video where we take a look behind the scenes of logistic regression with NIME. The goal is to give you a quick and summarized explanation of the logistic regression algorithm running behind the logistic regression learner node. As in all other types of regressions, the logistic regression models the relationship between a dependent variable, sometimes also called a category, class or target, and one or more independent variables, also known as input features, with the help of some regression coefficients. We call the dependent variable y, the n independent variables x1 to xn, and the regression coefficients beta0 to beta n. The goal then is to find the regression coefficients. Let's have a look at the differences between the logistic regression model and other regression models, for example, linear regression. One main difference is that in logistic regression the dependent variable has to be nominal rather than numerical. It represents a class system with a finite number of possible nominal values. The second main difference is that in other regression approaches we assume a functional relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variables through a number of regression coefficients. For example, y is equal to the linear combination of the independent variables. In logistic regression we have a similar situation, except that we now have a functional relationship between the probability of a class of the independent variable and the independent variables. Remember though that the goal stays the same, we want to find the unknown regression coefficients. Let's combine ourselves for the moment to a binary classification problem. Here the dependent variable, which we call y, has two possible outcomes, which are coded as 0 and 1. First we need a function that describes the relationship between the probability of a class and the independent variables. By definition a probability value always falls between 0 and 1. One of many functions fulfilling this, plus a number of additional requirements, is 1 divided by 1 plus the exponential function to the power of minus z, for any real number z. In the case of logistic regression, z is taken as the linear combination of all independent variables, and the probability that y is equal to the class that is coded as 1 is commonly abbreviated with pi. So our goal is to find the regression coefficients for the given probability function. But what about the second class that is coded as 0? Also by definition the probability of all classes have to sum up to 1. In cases where the dependent variable is binary, this means that the sum of the probability of y being equal to 1 and the probability of y being equal to 0 has to be 1. Consequently we can calculate the probability of the second class as 1 minus the probability of the first class. Therefore we don't need any coefficients for the second class. In NIME this class is called reference category and is coded as 0. In order to calculate the regression coefficients we maximize the likelihood function. This is defined as the product over all samples where in each factor we multiply the probability of the class being equal to 1 to the power of the value of y in the sample by the probability of the class being equal to 0 to the power of 1 minus the value of y, where y is always either 0 or 1. 0 if y is equal to the reference category, otherwise 1. The goal now is to find the regression coefficients that maximize the likelihood function. As the logarithm is a monotonically increasing function, maximizing the logarithm of the likelihood function is equivalent to maximizing the original likelihood function. It has the advantage that it transforms the product into a sum, which is easier to handle. This new likelihood function is called the log likelihood function, double capital L for short. It can be proven that the likelihood function as well as the log likelihood function are strictly concave. As a result, we know that this optimization problem has a solution and that the solution is unique. However, this optimization problem has no closed form solution. Therefore, we need to use iterative methods to train our logistic regression model. In NIME Analytics Platform, 
two different methods are implemented. The iteratively reweighted least square algorithm and the stochastic average gradient method. The iteratively reweighted least square method relies on the Newton method. The stochastic average gradient method, on the other hand, relies on the idea of the gradient descent method and minimizes the negative of the log likelihood function, which is also known as the loss function. In each iteration, the algorithm moves into a descending direction of the negative of the log likelihood function with a step size delta, which is called the learning rate. One of the main differences of the algorithms is that the stochastic average gradient supports regularization. Let's talk for a moment about regularization. What is it and why and when do we need it? We said before that the optimization problem we solved to estimate the regression coefficients has a unique solution. But what happens if the data are linearly separable? Let's have a look at an easy example with only one independent variable x. Here, if x is negative, the class is 0. And if x is positive, the class is 1. The function that would split this data set best is a step function, with a step from 0 to 1 at x equal to 0. On this slide we can see that the higher the module of beta is, the closer we approximate the step function. So for the perfect step function, we need module of beta infinite. That is, the algorithm diverges. We have a similar situation if a feature only occurs in one class. In this case, the algorithm will assign a very high coefficient value to this feature, causing overfitting. To summarize, we can say that the log likelihood function favors high values for the coefficients in case of linearly separable class problems. To avoid overfitting and convergency problems of the algorithm, we can penalize high coefficients by adding a regularization term to the log likelihood function. The NIME learner node provides two common regularization terms. The first one is called Gauss or L2 regularization. Here the regularization term is the quadratic sum of the coefficient values. The name comes from the fact that it is the square of the small L2 norm. The second one is L1, also known as Laplace regularization, where the small L1 norm of the coefficients is added to the log likelihood function. Both L1 and L2 regularization have Bayesian interpretations as constraints on the priors. The Gauss regularization assumes that the coefficients are Gaussian distributed with mean 0 and lambda equal to 1 divided by sigma to the power of 2. And the Laplace regularization assumes that the coefficients are Laplace distributed. But where Gauss prefers coefficient vectors with many small coefficients, Laplace prefers some sparse coefficient vectors with some larger values. Therefore, Laplace regularization can be used for automatic feature selection. Now that we know how the coefficients are calculated, let's talk about how we can use them. Of course, most importantly, we can use them to calculate the probability for our classes, but they also give us more information about the problem. One possibility of interpreting the coefficients is by their sign. Positive values for the coefficients mean that higher values of the related feature lead to higher probability for the class for which we calculate the regression coefficients. Negative values, on the other hand, show that higher values of the related feature lead to smaller probabilities. The Weil test is another approach that can be used. In terms of output, we get the p-values, which tell us whether or not a feature has significant impact. Another advanced option is the calculation of the odds ratio, which tell us how the odds change if a feature is increasing by a unit. The odds ratio for an input feature is calculated by the exponential function to the power of the according coefficient. We have reached the end of this video. You are now equipped to watch the video about a logistic regression learner node.